Okay, in today's video, I'm actually gonna teach you something. I'm gonna show you how I shoot and stitch panoramas. Now, the other day I was asked by another YouTuber, Gavin, why do you never do sponsorships? Well, I do do sponsorships, but they're very rare. And the reason why they're rare is because even though I do actually regularly get approached by companies to try and promote their products, um, most of the time, those products don't really have any relevance to this channel, you know, to landscape photography. And I figured you guys don't really want to watch uh, product promos of completely obscure products. What about that hemorrhoid cream? That was good. What hemorrhoid cream? You know, the bum butter. Did it work? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Well, show me. No, not the hemorrhoid, the, the cream. Anyway, I'm happy to say that this video is a sponsored video, and that is because Skylum got in touch and asked me if I'd like to try out their new pano stitching tool for Luminar Neo, and I did try it out, and I've got to be honest with you, I was absolutely blown away because it managed to do a better job at stitching some tricky images that I had than Photoshop. Let me give you an example. So if you remember this image, that I shot a couple of months ago down in the States. I'm really happy with how it turned out, but when I first stitched this together in Photoshop using the Photo Merge tool, it did not do a good job. And look at this weird little artifact that I had in this cascade here. So, I mean, pretty much any pano stitching tool is gonna have a problem with moving objects. And of course, this water that was trickling down this cliff was moving. So I thought, well, that's the first thing I'll use to try and test out the pano stitching tool from Luminar Neo. And within a few seconds, just loaded the images in, hit go, and it did a much better job than Photoshop. None of those weird anomalies in that cascade. So in Luminar Neo, I select and drag these images into the pano stitching module and press start. Luminar Neo then performs a stitch. I then preview it and crop if needed, save that, and now I can load it up and take a closer look to see if it did a better stitch job. And as you can see, we got a perfect stitch on the first attempt, unlike the manual surgery that I had to perform on the Photoshop version. So because that first image turned out to be a really good pano stitch, I, I would say perfect, that got me thinking, well, what else could it do that I'd previously struggled to do in Photoshop? So I dug out these two images and I'd had real problems trying to stitch this together in Photoshop in the past. And this image is a perfect example of sloppy shooting. And I'll be quite honest with you, most of the time when I'm shooting a panorama, I'm in a, a tricky position, I'm on a cliff edge, it's windy, it's slippery, or it's freezing cold, and I'm in a bit of a rush, and I'm not really doing a proper job of shooting the pano. And then this is a perfect example of two images that really should have been at least three images to stitch this pano properly, maybe even four. So I thought I'd give the pano stitching tool in Luminar Neo a go, and again, it, it did a really good job. All right, so I thought I'd give you a little speed comparison and also the results uh, that you're gonna get between Photoshop and Luminar Neo. So here are these two raw files, this one and this one. So I'm gonna go to Tools, Photoshop, Photo Merge. And I've tried this already on Auto and then the results were unusable. So I'm gonna go for Reposition and click OK. And this does take quite a while because these are fairly high resolution images and it's going to chug away. It's a bit, a bit boring this bit, isn't it? Didn't really think this through. Uh, but like and subscribe. <laughs> Come on. The reason why I'm showing you this is because in my experience doing this same stitch in Luminar Neo is quite a lot faster. There you go. So we've, we've got our finished image and that's actually not too terrible um, but if I just click here and drag my marquee down to the horizon line you can see that things are a little bit wonky you can see that in the right of the frame uh, the image the horizon is a bit lower 
So I want to try and fix that if I can. So now let's go into Neo and see if it can do a better job. So I'll click on these two images and I'll drag them into the panorama stitching module. Hit start and then you'll see how much quicker this is. Look at that, bang. Now, what I love about this over Photoshop, in Photoshop, you have to kind of choose these settings before you actually create the panel. Whereas in, uh, in Luminar Neo, you get this preview, which is really good. So I'm looking at these. That looks great, but I've, I've lost a bit of the composition. That looks good too. The horizon looks a lot straighter on this one, but there's gonna be a lot that needs to be cropped out of that. So I think that's probably the one I'm gonna go for. Now, there's still a bit of curvature on the horizon, but it's nowhere near as bad as what I was looking at there in Photoshop. I, I can see that's kind of taken a big drop down. Whereas in here, it's nowhere near as bad. I reckon I can just rotate this a little bit and it's gonna be pretty good. So I'm gonna hit continue. So this is the, the crop window. So I, I could just go for that, crop it as is, but then I'm gonna lose some of these interesting details that you could see over here. So I'm actually gonna drag this, this crop preview out to about there, which will end up with some empty space, but I'm hoping to just kind of fill that space just to fill in the blank. So we'll bring that to about there. So I, I kind of like that composition. So let's hit crop. And now it's given us the finished image. So looking at that, I feel like that horizon line is, even though it's still a bit curved, it's way better than what we saw in Photoshop. I might not even need to rotate that. I might just have to pinch this ever so slightly. So I'm gonna hit save. And then I can just save this as a TIFF file and start either working with it in Luminar Neo or put it back into Photoshop. So here is the finished image. That looks pretty damn good to me. And it was a lot quicker to put together than the one in Photoshop. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna right click and go export and I'm gonna give it a name, call it Pano2, because I already did a test of this and hit export. Bosh, that's done. So now I'm gonna go back into Photoshop, pick that up, open, and then what I wanna to do to kind of fix some of that curvature is I'm gonna to go to Filter, Distort, Pinch, and I'm gonna put this at about 7%. Hit OK, and look at that. It's really straightened that horizon up. So now if I drag my marquee tool, click from the top, drag it in and try and find that horizon line, I could see there's a little bit of a extra space on the right of the frame there. So I could rotate it, but because this is a super wide angle lens, if you were able to see the other side of the frame having a horizon, you'd probably see the same discrepancy there. So I'm actually gonna leave that because that to me is a bit more natural as to what the camera might produce. And then now we've just got these empty white spaces. So for a bit of fun, let's just go and get the uh, spot healing brush and just very lazily go through and just brush into that and try and fill all of that. Oh, this, this is just driving me mental, this. I'm, I'm using a mouse, it, it is just painful. Wish I had a stylus. Hepatitis? A, a stylus. Why? <sighs> anyway, I think I'm just gonna hit fast forward on this. Oh, look at that, that's, that's quite impressive. Let's get a bigger brush this time. Okay, let's do that. Oh, well, that turned out pretty good. Maybe just take that little guy out. There we go, that's good. And then let's try down here. Uh, uh, do you grunt while you're doing this? Look at that, pretty good. Let's just clean that up. Oh yeah, that's, that's quite impressive. Now, for all I know, I am not an expert with Luminar. Luminar may have a generative AI fill tool that will do exactly what I just did in Photoshop. And if it does, and it's good, then maybe I'll look at that for a future video. But for now, I just wanted to show you how I integrate this awesome pano stitching tool into my workflow and then bring it back into Photoshop to get what is way better than what Photoshop gave me in the first place. All right, I, I promised you guys a pano and I'm, I'm gonna show you an absolutely spectacular shot. I'm spoiling you with this, I, I really am. What we've got here is the arse end 
of my house. This is my 100 year old church that I've been restoring for the last year and a half and I'm not even halfway done. I did actually go out twice to try and get something at an epic location but the, the conditions were terrible and I, I just thought that sod it I'm going to do this and like I said there's been so many complaints about just spectacular waterfalls I figured you'd love this you'd love a ramshackle old Nova Scotian house. So of course you've got the church there, that's the church from, from the back the back end and over to the left of the frame what I've done is I've tried to make sure that you've got some level of interest there. So that is the old roof that we craned off of that roof that you could see there, that's a new roof on top but we craned that off of there. And then in the right of the frame there's the old Bigfoot Hardcastle Hilton camper. You know just to give you some, some interest, just to balance out the composition so there's lots of really interesting elements to make this a spectacular grand landscape and even better zero clouds absolutely zero clouds yeah it's a it's a blue sky day so yeah not one cloud no no color whatsoever so yeah it's gonna be a brilliant shot anyway let me show you the back of the camera and i'll explain to you how i do these these panoramas so the first thing that i do when i'm doing a, a panorama on the tripod is I level the tripod so that the spirit level, that little bubble level, is perfectly centered. And what that enables me to do, if you look in the frame here, you could see those two green markers signifying that it's level. And once you've leveled the tripod, you can then sweep around the scene. Let's just say my, my pano was gonna go from all the way over there to all the way over here. If you look at it, one, two, three, four, five. Each frame has these lovely green indicators telling me that every single frame is going to be perfectly level. Now there is a limit to what you can get away with if you're shooting with a super wide and you're doing a huge pan but if you can get let's say a four or five shot pano to have every single frame perfectly level you're winning already. And then the second thing that I do, so if you're looking at this composition, I've actually already accounted for wastage. So my composition that I want is actually gonna be more like, oh, there's something down my neck. Get off me, you bugger. It's gonna be something like this. And then I'll sweep through about four or five frames. But whenever you stitch a pano together, you're gonna to get about 10% wastage. So I'm gonna back off to about there. That'll give me plenty of frame space. If I do five shots starting from there, to there that'll give me plenty of wastage that I can crop out what I don't need and still end up with the composition that I actually want. So as I said I mean you know probably one of my best compositions ever really and if you've been watching this channel for a few years you, you know how good it is especially all those waterfalls that you're all sick of seeing. Anyway I'm gonna wait for the light to get about 50% less dull than it is now could be about 25 minutes might get a little bit of a belt of Venus look to it <laughs> That's all I could really hope for because there's not a single cloud. And then I'll take this shot for real and then we'll get it back inside, load it up into Luminar Neo and see how the pano stitching does because one of the reasons why I did want to do a, an architecture pano is because they're quite challenging to stitch together. When you've got a building that's got all of these angles and straight lines, horizontal and vertical, so it's going to be a bit more challenging than something that's just like, you know, a forest or a mountain or some, some beach shot where the only challenge you've really got there is the horizon line. With this, you know, we've got all of these windows, the gutters, the roof lines. If the software is going to mess up, I would think that this will push it to the limits. We'll see. All right, so I'm back in Luminar Neo and you can actually see that this only took three frames. I don't know why I was thinking it would take five. <laughs> three is plenty. So that one's selected. I'm gonna hold down shift and click on that one. That selects all three images and it doesn't really matter what order they're in. So I'll click on these, drag them into the panorama stitching tool and then hit start. And just like you saw before, it's gonna give me that lovely preview before I do all the hard work of stitching it. So I can check which one I like the best. And uh, I think I'm gonna go for that one because I just like the shape of the building. So I'm gonna hit continue and then it'll give me that crop tool. I don't need all that grass. So we'll just, we'll just crop it to that. And maybe, maybe we don't need all of those those trees there in the distance and maybe we don't need all of that 
just just bring it in a little bit so that that's that's pretty good so crop that and then save and now it does all of the hard work lets you preview everything first and then it stitches it together rather than Photoshop which does it in reverse and you kind of work in blind so let's double click on this and launch our panel now as you remember I said there doing panel stitches of architecture that is where you're going to find problems and um, where I expect we'll see problems is on the on these straight angles the, these roof lines and the gutters so let's see if we can find uh, ah so I can see one right there if I zoom in a bit yeah it's got this weird little anomaly so let's fix that let's clone that out we'll go to edit and then scroll down here to the clone tool and I'm just going to pick a selection uh, that I think is going to work as a good patch. And I reckon that's probably going to do it. So I'll just click there and that will just take a patch out of there. And then I'll just roll that over and then click on that. And that looks, that looks pretty good, but I'll try a better one. Let's undo that. Reset. Let's try and get a different patch. So let's take a patch from about here. And just keep doing this until it, oh, that's perfect. Click on that. There you go. That is that is Bobby Dazzler, is that? And I can't see any other anomalies. I'm actually blown away that that was the only anomaly that I had when doing a, an architecture stitch. Because I'll show you the one I did in Photoshop. Uh, <laughs> Photoshop kindly added some entirely new architectural features. This see this little angle here. That's new. I, I mean, I kind of like it. Um, but I don't know if it's structurally sound to that. And then you could see there's some some weird shingling going on there. That that would that that would be a very talented shingler that could do that. So yeah, that was my uh, attempt in Photoshop. Didn't work out that well. Whereas the one in Neo wasn't quite perfect. It just had that one little anomaly, but it was easily fixed with this this clone tool. So overall, I'm very impressed with this panorama stitching tool. So there you go, those are my first impressions. Now, if you're interested in trying out this software, there is a link in the description below and I've put a little coupon code in there so you can actually save some money if you fancied purchasing this software. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I know it was a little bit different to the usual format, but rest assured that next week's episode will be right back to the usual ridiculous shenanigans. So give it the old thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, don't forget to tickle my bell and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.